Well, thank you all for coming tonight. It's a beautiful afternoon. You could be anywhere and you chose to be here. I appreciate that. I also appreciate seeing a lot of other artists in the crowd. Um, it's good that we support each other. That's something that we need to do for sure. Uh, my name is Ben Roth. I've lived in the Valley about 19 years. I uh, became an artist uh, about 13 years ago doing metalwork and sculpture. I've been doing it uh, full time since then. Before that, I was in the restaurant business. And before that, I ran a little uh, bed and breakfast. And before that, I got a degree in hospitality. Uh, I was working in Vegas, and it was miserable, so I moved here. And I'd spent time here growing up. I knew the place, but I didn't think I was going to get to live here so soon after college. And I'm thrilled that I did. Um, someone asked me recently, why are you an artist? Why have you chosen this career path? And I don't know. <laughs> I don't know sometimes. Sometimes I ask myself the same question. But, and I don't have a perfect answer for you, but I have been thinking about it a lot. And have any of you watched the Marcel the Shell with Shoes videos on YouTube? Raise your hand if you've seen those before. They're really good. I strongly recommend them. They're like three to four minutes long. Marcel's a little shell with one eye and little plastic shoes, and he's kind of a philosopher. And I think he said it best. He said, life's a party, rock your body. <laughs> but that's not all he said. Actually, that's not, that doesn't really apply to this actually so much. Actually, when asked why he smiles so much, his answer was, because it's worth it. And I thought that was a really good answer. And I think it sort of applies to the question brought to me, why are you an artist? It's because it's, it's worth it. You know, it's a struggle. It is hard. It is stressful. It's depressing, it is lonely, but it is worth it to me. It, uh, I'm stoked every day I wake up. I'm stoked when I take these mat raw materials and I make something out of it, out of nothing sort of, and then people respond to it. It's really worth it. It's worth the effort. And, and it also feels right too. It feels like what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, you know, in life, things kind of keep popping up as you go through life. I encourage you to notice those things that keep popping up. Um, I wouldn't recommend responding to them the first time they pop up, but if things keep, if something keeps presenting itself to you, you should take notice of it. And that's how art has been for me. Ever since I was young, I've made art. I never really thought I could make a living at it, but I did a lot of drawing when I was young. I made elaborate Valentine's boxes for school. <laughs> I uh, made elaborate signs and gifts for my family, and, and then in college I took sculpture classes. My first semester I sold all the sculptures I made, but then the second semester I had no good idea. Did not have a single good idea the whole semester, and that sort of freaked me out. So I stayed in my major in hospitality. Uh, but then after I graduated I went to work at the convention center, and I was managing the public foods, but then I was also doing the ice sculptures and the food sculptures which I love that part, and the management part I didn't like at all. And, uh, and then when I moved here, this is just this art-filled valley. There's so much inspiration and you're surrounded by artists. So I was making art on the side while working in the hospitality. And then I got the chance to build a restaurant and I went and talked to John Sims, who's here this evening, and showed him the design. And he's like, oh, I'd love to be a part of it. Now some of you guys have heard this story, so I'm sorry if you're hearing it again. But I said, we can't really afford to pay you to do the metal work, but we still need to do this metal work. And he's like, well, why don't I show you how to do it and you can do it, which changed my life, uh, making that offer. So I spent uh, three months in his studio doing the metal work and I just fell in love with the material. Like metal just felt right in my hands. It felt like I'd done it before, like in a past life or something. But then I had this restaurant to run. So for three years, I would sneak down to his studio and make things and then run back to the restaurant and run the restaurant sometimes with like black stuff smudged on my face. And then when I had the opportunity to get bought out of the restaurant in 2001, I decided to go for it. You know, I was like, nothing makes me happier than when I'm making my art. So I turned away from hospitality and decided to pursue a career in art and metal work. And I kind of thought in four or five years, I'd be jamming and it'd be great. <laughs> And now it's been 13 years, and I've learned patience. <laughs> I've learned to realize that things happen at their own pace. I've survived a few recessions. I've been broke a lot. Um, but 
it's pretty, it's pretty great. I really, really enjoy it. Um, but it does take guts. It takes guts to go for it and courage. Uh, George O'Keefe said, to create one's own world takes courage. And it does. And it also takes encouragement. And that's something I would like to thank my friends in this community for, for encouraging me to do what I do. And I, I want you to encourage other artists or other people in your life who are pursuing something creative to encourage them because it helps. Uh, in 2010, I read U.S. Census, a little over 15,000 people in the United States claim artists as their primary income. That's out of 300 million. <laughs> so it's, a, it's not an easy path, but it's also a joy and a privilege. I'm super thankful that I get to do it. So what I'm going to do is show you a typical year in my life. Since I got the smartphone, I've been pretty good about documenting what I'm up to. I'm not a great photographer, I'll warn you now. But it's fun at the end of a year to just kind of go through my picture and see what I did for the year. And people often come up and ask me, what are you doing? What have you been making? And I assume you're curious. So I'm going to share it with all of you to kind of show you what I've been doing. I assume you mean it when you ask me at the grocery store what I've been making. <laughs> and if you don't want to hear about it, don't ask. Because <laughs> I'll usually pull out my smartphone and show you what I've been making lately. But we're going to run through a year. Uh, but there's about 100 pictures. They'll go by pretty quick. Uh, we can. I actually, well, I could stop it. If you really want me to stop on a picture, I could stop it. Or we could just talk about the images when we're done. We're, so we're going to start in April of 2014. I got a call from Anna Olson. She's head of marketing out at the village, but she's also at the, uh, on the airport board. She called to say that the airport was going to be under construction for six months and that they were going to build this construction tunnel. She wanted to hire me to embellish it, to make it look attractive for visitors and locals coming in and out of the airport. And she was willing to pay me to do it. And when someone calls and offers me something like that, I get sort of emotional because, well, I'm, I'm flattered that they're interested in hiring me. And then when they're willing to pay me for my work, a living wage, it's amazing. I really, really appreciate it. So of course I said yes. And, and I hired my friend Mike Tierney to help me with it because he's a spray paint artist and we had like a 130 foot long tunnel to, to decorate and a box out front that we needed to decorate and then he thought it'd be good to build a tram. So I built a tram out of cardboard and he painted that. And we spent three weeks working on the project. We'd work from 11 at night till 5 in the morning for three weeks to get this painted. Uh, I still have most of the art stacked up in storage space, so if anyone's interested or curious about them, they're available. <laughs> uh, so yeah, let's start the slides. Uh, I'll just make a few comments while we're going along. Oh, yeah, we're going to turn off the lights so you can see the slides better. So it's going to be kind of dark. Slide shows about seven minutes long, so. Hey, Stefan. How you doing? While this is going, I just sent pictures to Emmy. Um, she couldn't be here because uh, she's supporting someone who is in surgery. And I just sent her pictures, to, and she's in tears. Thank you all so much for coming. So it's a like, packed house. Yeah, great turnout. Great turnout. Uh-oh. OK, make this go away. OK, here we go. So this is there's the tram I made out of cardboard, and he painted it. Tierney did the backdrops and the big things. I painted, or uh, I cut stencils, because that's what I was good at for this job. So I made trees, and I made bison, and I made bears, and I made ravens, and I made antelope and cabins and things like that. Then after that, I had the eco fair. I was hired and paid again to help with that. I used skis and these old wagon wheels, and I built a bridge at last year's eco fair. The kids got to run power tools. They really enjoyed it. Then I had a friend who needed a fireplace, but she didn't have a chimney, so we did that. I made this birdhouse for the Community Safety Network fundraiser. Some pictures are just inspiration images that I snap as I'm living. Then I had a show in Santa Barbara and decided to make a Komodo dragon for the show. This show was last June. It was a close-up of his claws. I had him powder coated over in Idaho. And that's the Komodo dragon all finished. And then I made a pig. And he really wanted to go to California. <laughs> But he, someone bought him here, so he didn't get a go. But the otter got to go. And uh, that's the otter in California at the opening, or uh, at the space where I had the show. And I also brought a cobra. These pieces are made out of screen. 
This was the show I had in Santa Barbara. It was in the funk zone, a funk district. It's a one day show. Super King came in and uh, <laughs> checked it out. The shark didn't fit in the show, so I put it in the alley next door. And then I rushed back to town for the Wild Festival, and we did these, uh, these uh, steamroller prints. That's the block I carved. And there's the final print of it. If anyone knows where that is, I would love to know, because I don't know where that ended up. I don't get paid vacation, but I live in Jackson, so I get to go fishing on occasion. This was a fireplace I'd built the year before, but I got to see it. And then I uh, did handrails for a friend of mine who built a house south of town. They made a baby. <laughs> I made the rails. I also made him a coat rack. And then I got hired to make a piece of furniture for a lawyer friend of mine, so I made it out of cardboard, biked it over, dropped it in his office. He's like, build it, I like it. So I built it out of metal, I drew it on my computer, had the parts laser cut. Then I welded it, sandblasted it, and then I blackened it and put it back in the office. That was August of last summer. Someone needed a trout, so I made him a trout. <laughs> and I went and caught a trout. <laughs> Then I made a bunch of bowls for some clients as thank you gifts. And then I opened a can of worms. <laughs> and I made an installation sculpture at the party I had for them. And this is a gate I made for the Craigheads the year before, but I hadn't seen it powder coated. On Wednesdays, I go to life drawing and do figurative sculptures out of clay to kind of keep my skills up. Last fall, I took a little break and just made some art. So I made some sponges, sea sponges out of screen. And I had them powder coated. That one's at Sudachi and available. And then this, <laughs> the sea sponge, uh, the fan, is also powder coated. It's also available. Actually, I think Emmy wants it. And then I sold my whale eye, which I had hung up in a restaurant here in town, so I boxed it up. My mom asked me to take that picture of a purple rock with green moss. <laughs> then I had a trade I had to do with a friend of mine who'd done some writing for me, and she wanted a table. So there's the prototype. There's the contemporary version of that table. You can rearrange it and you can sit at it. And there's the more rustic version of that table. Those are also available. <laughs> and then I made a snake out of stainless steel and put him in a cello case. <laughs> then I started work working with porcelain. I really like porcelain, so I've been making some figurative pieces out of that. Still trying to figure out how to glaze them. And I got to go to Denver for the Thanksgiving and I went to the Clifford Still Museum. It really blew my mind and his artist's life is a life I would love to live. Then I came back here and I decided to keep making some art for a couple of weeks and I made these shelf fungus, uh, kind of a hen of, the jung uh, hen of the woods, but it's kind of a tropical version. And I also made some morels. These are all out of porcelain. These are the hen of the jungle installed at my friend's house who bought it. It's the first piece I already purchased. And then these are the morels that I made and those are known as office. And I like seabirds, and I think the Arctic Tern's an amazing bird, so I tried making that out of porcelain. I made it out of two pieces of clay, and the body's hollow. I haven't fired it yet. We'll see how it holds up when I fire it. It might break. Every Christmas, I make a tumbleweed Christmas tree for Terra Hotel. And then I had to make a gate for some friends who have little boys, and they like bugs, so I made an ant gate for them. <laughs> look at how when you put paper over it, it got this cool like 3D look. And that's the, the ant gate installed just before the holidays. And then I got chain on the brain. A friend of mine brought me a box of bike chains. And I started making art out of that. So I made some pairs. And then I made this star right here. And I thought, well, I should make a flag. So I carved some blue board. And then from there, I covered it in plaster so it'll hold up to the heat of welding. And I laid a chain across it. And I liked how that looked. I painted it to kind of learn my, material, my subject matter and also once I welded on I thought it might be an extra bonus piece of art. So I started laying down the stripes and welding it. Uh, this is a spoon bowl I made for the CSA program. I'll tell you about that after the slideshow. I also paint sometimes on OSB board. And then I got hired to do a bra for bras for the cause and this was the design I proposed out of bike chains, a little micro mini skirt and that top. They didn't go for that one. They wanted something more like this, which is another design I proposed. So that's what we went with. So there's the branches. <laughs> then I added leaves. I made them out of bronze. And at first it wasn't covering her very well, so I made a bunch of leaves. And it came out a little bit. And so I did some pruning, thinned it out a little bit. And it sold a couple days ago at Bras for the Cause.
And then I got to go on vacation with my family to Hawaii, and I saw these amazing trees, and they really blew my mind. The branches coming off this tree are like 60 to 80 feet long, going per like parallel to the ground. So I'm going to do some woodblock prints of those images that I took. I made somebody else's design. That's an architect's table. And then I wanted to make a sculpture for the Steo store, so I made that little mock-up and convinced them they needed it. And then I made these Tetons. Here's some pictures of it kind of coming together. There's the Tetons hanging from the ceiling. Uh, and then I was making stainless steel countertops this spring to help pay bills. And that's how much fun stainless steel countertops is. <laughs> <laughs> Another shot of the Teton sculpture. I uh, made this this spring for a friend of mine. It's a grill cover. Help pay the bills in March. Here's a close-up of the flag. The stars are chains. So the mold got kind of nice patterns on it from welding on it. Here's a close-up. Then from there, I rusted the stripes to make them red and used gun blue for the background for the stars. And that's the piece all finished. I think it'll be hung up in the Steel store here in Jackson this summer. And this is yesterday, the, uh, the mountains getting powder coated in Idaho. <laughs> and that was my favorite picture from last year. So that's how I ended it. Well, I got a few more things to say before questions. <laughs> got to wrap this up, you know. <laughs> so that's it. That's sort of that's a typical year for me, uh, and I have to hustle, you know. I got to be generating work, generating ideas, making art, pretty much every day, um, and I love it. And I think it's important for the community to have people like myself living here, making art, because I think artists are the soul of a community. I think they give a community its character and they drive its culture. And I think it's important for us as a community to support artists and help them stay here. I know, I've known a lot of great artists who've come through, spent some time, and then left because they just couldn't make it here. And unfortunately, it's no matter what your occupation here in, in Jackson, it's hard. Whether you're an artist or, or whatever you do, it's tricky. But uh, I do think it's important that we keep artists here. So I'd just like to make some suggestions on things we can do to support artists. Uh, some things you can do is support galleries that show local artists work. Uh, go to openings from lo that lo local artists are having and go check out their shows and buy their work. Uh, support the businesses that support local artists because uh, there are some businesses here that are really good about that and we should encourage it. Uh, there's also a CSA program which stands for Community Supported Art and that is a share program where you buy a share and you get nine pieces of art from local artists over a nine month period. I believe it's around $400 for the share and I'm participating in that. And each artist got paid 2,000 bucks to do that. You have to make 40 pieces of art, which isn't easy, but you're getting paid a living wage to do it, which is really nice. Uh, what I'm, oh, is this thing just going? Sorry. <laughs> you guys, should we let it run? Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I prefer you looking up there instead. <laughs> anyway, uh, and, and the only other thing I'd like to say is what I'm doing, I'm directing my nonprofit energy and philanthropic energy towards making life easier for artists in Jackson. I will also benefit from my efforts, but I'm also trying to make it easier for the artists around me. Uh, through the Teton Art Lab, we're trying to create uh, affordable housing for artists subsidized studio space for 20 to 30 artists, a place for artists to gather and eat and talk, a place for us to show our work. So if you think that's a good idea, support the Teton Art Lab. Um, Old Bill's Fun Run is a good place to do it. And we'll be making major progress in that field over the next couple of years. I think that's just about it. I believe that is all. That's my pitch for the day. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Any questions?